It was great uh, being back in Centos Center with with, uh, with fans. I tell you, it was uh, was great for our players, and our players had you know fed off the energy uh, of the crowd. It's been a long, long, long time, uh, almost a year and a half since we've had a, an official game uh, with a crowd. So, thanks to the fans that came out, made Centos again one of the best places to play in the entire country. Um, Ferris State, you know, I, again, Coach Bronkman is a good friend of mine. Like I've said before, you know, Zach Hankins played there. Uh, that was kind of the connection. Known him for a few years, and, and uh, he does a great job. they got a great program. I think they're going to have a really good year at the D2 level. So we appreciate them coming down to play us. Um, you know, he, he, uh, he pulled me to this aside at, at halftime and, and as I was put, tell, putting in our uh, five, you know, starting five for the second half. And he said, Coach, man, he said, I know you got uh, Fremantle out, but he said, man, you guys play really, really, really hard. Um, they just came off playing Michigan State, uh, I think it was about a week ago, and uh, he was blown away with how hard our guys played. And that's kind of what I told our guys heading into the game. You know, We get a chance to make a first impression here, um, and not just for 20 minutes. We want to do it for 40 minutes, be relentless with our ball pressure, um, talk, our pace on offense, and I thought we did those things. A lot of things, obviously, to clean up, uh, a lot of execution on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. Uh, but we'll, we'll get that as, as we kind of move on. But as long as the effort's there, I can live with the execution, and we'll get better at those areas. Coach, we just got to talk to Duan and Colby, and I thought it was pretty apparent tonight in, in just the way that they played that it seemed like they were confident in their ability to help this team. And I was curious, like, what's that conversation like with a guy who has – a good freshman year, and you know that you're going to be expecting more of him as a sophomore. How do you sort of present that to them so that they know, hey, I want you to take a step and I want you to be a guy this year? Yeah, we, we, Adam, it's a great question. You know, we need Dewan and, and Colby both to take a big step forward uh, into their sophomore years, and, and they have, and they've shown that. They've earned that right over the spring, summer, fall, practice. Um, you know, like Dewan didn't start tonight, but he's playing like a starter. Right, you know, just because we have five guys, we have to put five guys in the book to start the game. Like we have more than five guys that are that are able to start on our team, and uh, we need those guys to take big steps. You know, so those are talks that we have, Adam. And, and how do we do that? Right, is is the consistency. You know, sometimes freshmen are inconsistent with their effort, maybe their execution. It's a long season. Sometimes they'll hit that wall. Um, I think those two guys have been really, really steady throughout the preseason here in practice. And uh, we need those guys to both be really good players for us on both ends of the floor. Uh, I, start, I thought it started with their effort, both guys. I thought they were relentless. Colby was relentless on the glass. Dewan's pressure was relentless the entire game and his pace. And uh, you know, it's, it was good to see. Now we need to continue to see that moving forward because we need both those guys to be really good players for us. Travis, just following up on your conversation about how hard you guys played tonight. It seems like games like these where you start fast and you're up by a lot of points and you're way bigger than a team, it's hard to be sharp for 40 minutes. At least for the first half while you were substituting lots of different rotations in there, it seemed like you guys stayed pretty sharp. Were you happy with the defensive effort? I was, especially there in the first half. I thought in the early on in the second half, Rick, I thought we took some tough shots and had some turnovers early on in the second half, which led to some transition. Now, I think that was the only four-minute war that we lost was that first one, that sixth war of the game. Um, I thought our effort was pretty dang good, though. I really did. I, um, you know, we're trying to – we're going to play a lot of guys. I think one of the advantages of this team is, is that we have a lot of guys. We have a lot of depth. So we have to wear teams down. We have to wear them down with our depth. And we're going to press a little bit. You know, whether it's on the side, underneath that, of bounds, full court. Um, again, because again, we got to be able to use our depth, and that's how fast we have to play on the offensive end. We got to play really fast. We need more possessions in the game. Um, you know, obviously, 40 minutes is going to stay the same. That's not going to change game to game. But you can change the amount of possessions in the game, and and that's where we need to be in the in the 80s, mid 80s. To honestly, I'd say probably mid 80s is probably where we need to be with our pace of play. And I, I would again, without seeing the data right now, I would say we're probably pretty dang close to that. Dwan, one of his strengths seems to be the energy and intensity that he brings into the game, whether it's on offense or defense. Does it help to have a, a guy coming off your bench like that so like you don't have a drop off when you go to the bench? Yeah. I mean, you talk about Dwan. Dwan, his ability to be a two-way player, right? You can feel him on the floor. You feel his presence defensively. You feel his pace, how relentless he is at getting to the paint. Um, he changes the whole game. And the same can be said for Adam Kunkel. 
I, Adam Kunkel, I think, what, I don't know what he finished up with. I think he had 21, yeah, hit four threes or whatever it was. Um, he, he's like a starter too, you know, and that, again, that's the advantage our team has is we have depth and, and those guys are playing to win, right? You know, they, they understand that it's all about winning. Nothing else matters. What did you, you obviously, you played everyone on the roster tonight pretty much that was available. Um, what did you make of the big guys? We got to see Jack Nungy for the first time. We got to see Jerome Hunter do some good things. Deontay Miles made some plays. So I'm curious what you thought of that, that area of the court around the basket. Yeah, um, you know, I thought it was pretty good. You know, again, there's going to be a lot of areas of improvement. But, you know, I thought Deontay played hard. You know, again, he, uh, we tried to play everybody tonight. You know, so the rotations, what we did tonight aren't going to be what they are probably moving forward, right? Um, Deontay's been really good in practice. I mean, he, he gives great effort, great energy. He's tremendous defensively. I think he could be one of the best defensive players in the Big East just with his length, um, his mo mobility on, and ball screen defense and guarding the ball is unique. And I think Jack, you could see, I mean, just his sheer size and skill. He has a very calming presence about him. You know, he just does. When he catches the ball, it feels like everything kind of slows down out there. Um, and I think he can be that calming presence for us. But he's big. He rebounds the ball. I thought Cesar did some good things. He played hard. I think he finished with seven rebounds. He did some things where he's got to learn, right? And, and, but it's early. He's a freshman. Um, I thought Jerome's got to stay, kind of stay in his lane a little bit. I thought he got outside of himself there for, for about a three-minute span. But he's talented, and he can impact the game in a lot of different ways. So, again, we got a lot of different guys that can do a lot of different things. We just got to figure out which, which guys play really well together. And, again, I think as, as this preseason kind of goes on, you know, they'll define their roles even a little bit tighter, right? Um, but I like what, what we're getting from each one of those guys. And I, I noticed, um, you know, Zach Fremantle over there on the bench, she's not wearing the boot anymore. So I was wondering, is that, is that a sign of progress in terms of his recovery? God, I hope so. Uh, I know he was tired of wearing the boot, Adam. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. I mean, I, we had a, uh, a meeting with Doc. The doctor did the surgery uh, today. And everything is progressing at a very good rate. Um, you know, obviously, he wants to be out there on the floor. We all want him out there on the floor. We'll get him there. Dave Fluker's working really, really hard with him every single day, along with our PTs, uh, to make sure he gets back out on the court in a timely fashion. Uh, what kind of upside does this team have at the free throw line? I mean, the numbers were great tonight. They weren't so good last year. Is there a lot of upside here? I think so. Like, we got to live at the line. We, we shot, I think, 31 free throws. Now, they shot 28, right? Like, we got to keep them off the line. Um, but I thought our guys were relentless getting to the paint. We got guys who can drive the ball, uh, relentless on the offensive glass. We got to be able to post the ball a little bit more as well uh, to Deontay, uh, to Jack, and those guys. Um, but we got to play paintball. And I think if we have that mentality, good things are going to happen for us on the offensive end. Travis, in your presser this week, you talked about emphasis as far as like playing fast and uh, being in transition. You guys had 25 fast, fast break points tonight. How big is that for you guys moving forward? And how close do you kind of feel like that's the expectation moving forward with this team? Yes, I think I think again with our with our depth. We need as many possessions as we can get in the game. Now that doesn't mean we want to take bad shots, and we got to. Sometimes we play a little bit too fast. We'll we'll take a contested early jump shot, or we'll turn the ball over. That's a work in progress. But we do need to push the ball after our misses, makes. Can we score more off of our defense this year? Which I thought we did tonight as well. We created some deflections and steals. It's almost like NASCAR, right? You know, we we were off to the races uh, to the other end. Um, but again, I, the best time to always attack is going to be in transition. If you look. At all the data, right? They say they they break it down points per possession, right? If you can if if you can get a shot within the first four seconds of the shot clock, that's the best time to attack by far. It, that your your numbers only get worse as the shot clock gets deeper into the shot clock. And now again, that doesn't mean we want to force anything, and that's where our guys got to continue to get better because we are wasting a few possessions out there. Uh, but we'll get better at that through film and and uh, and just some experience. And you mentioned earlier uh, kind of your ball pressure. You guys also did a really good job filling the passing lanes tonight. Can you kind of talk about the emphasis you guys put on that? Yeah, trying to use our athleticism, uh, trying to be more handsy. I think we finished with 38 deflections on the game. You know, we've made a huge point of emphasis on that this whole preseason, you know, being more disruptive on the ball, you know, contesting every pass. 
um, you know, wearing teams down again, being relentless. Um, I thought our guys did a great job of that, you know, throughout the game. Like I said, that created a lot of offense for us off of our defense where the defense isn't set for them. Travis, there was a lot of highlight dunks today and putbacks, a lot of good plays in transition, but I think the one that caught Sintas off guard the most was the Jerome Hunter coast-to-coast -coast, uh, facial that he put up a Sports Center top 10 play. Was that something you've seen in practice before? Did that, that kind of surprise you as well? No, you know, Jerome is long and he's athletic. I uh, wasn't surprised at all. He's done that in practice as well. I do want to make the point, I forget, I think it was Colby had, had, a, had a nice dunk. Yep. I think he dunked on Jack. <laughs> All right, so, so Jack was a little shocked, too. I think his face was like he had big eyes. He was like, hey, what the heck just happened? You know, and uh, so I, I'm sure those guys will get some laughs out of, in the locker room on that one. Athletically, does this, how does this compare to the other teams you've had in the previous years? Is this one of the most athletic teams you've had? I think we're long. I think we're athletic. I think we're versatile. You, know, you look at a guy like Jerome. Jerome, 6'8", can do a lot of different things. He's long. He can handle the ball. He can pass it a little bit. He can shoot a little bit. He has that extra layer of versatility to our team that I thought we really needed. And it really changes us on both ends of the floor. I know he's obviously going to be um, super important this season, like he's been the last four seasons. But what do you think it says that we're almost at the end of your press conference and we really haven't talked about Paul Scruggs yet? Yeah, I, I, listen, it means we have other guys, right? And he trusts his teammates. I thought Paul, I mean, you look at his stat line. I mean, like, I think he finished with eight points, four assists, six rebounds, one turnover, four steals, right? I wouldn't say it's like a wow numbers, but it was a good night for him. But how he set the tone defensively right away, set the tone for the rest of the game for, the, for all of his teammates, Right, he was in a stance. He was foaming at the mouth. He was pressuring the ball. He was jumping to the ball. He was talking. Right, guys feed off that, and and I thought Paul really set the tone for us defensively, and he has to do that for us to be a really good team. And again, he, he's a tremendous player. We need him to be an All Big East guard, which he is. Uh, we need him to be the best point guard in the country, which I think he can be. And he trusts his teammates, so he knows he doesn't have to go out and score twenty. We got other guys who can do that. You know, we're probably going to have a lot of different guys in double figures, and it's going to be different guys, different nights, Adam, with this team. And, and, uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about winning, right? And, and everybody in that locker room understands that. Um, 26 of 31 from the foul line tonight. That's got to feel pretty good to see those, that kind of production. Yeah, we got to get to the line. You know, I thought we were, we were relentless um, driving the ball and, and getting on the glass, and, and that's how we have to, we have to play paintball. And then, you know, I talked about how important transition offense is. The other data point that's really important is how many paint touches are you getting, right? Now, that doesn't mean we have to shoot the ball every time we go to the paint. That could be a drive and kick or it could be a post up and kick out. But your numbers go dramatically up when you get the ball to the paint. And I thought we lived in the paint tonight, which is why we got 31 free throw attempts. Thanks.